Well, so as, as Nigeria evolves and, you know, faces new socioeconomic challenges, we've seen the likes of inflation, um, currency devaluation and employment, you know, have uh, become increasingly uh, crucial now for individuals to rethink their approach to um, estate planning. So the, the question is, how do you leave something behind for your family when uh, we have macroeconomic headwinds uh, taking away what you have? You know, currently, we're also seeing the issues um, around um, dormant accounts in Nigeria. But uh, joining me for this conversation, we have Mr. Michael Abiolu uh, Thomas. He's an MD CEO, United Capital Trustees Limited. Joining me right here in the studio, it's great to have you. Thank you so much, Laddie. Yeah, Thank it's you for uh, me. definitely a, a rainy day in Lagos right yes. now. It's raining cats and dogs yes, out there. Indeed. I wonder if it's uh, calmed down. But, <laughs> you know, definitely, um, you know, when it comes to leaving something mm. behind, you know, mm. as, as a breadwinner for your family, mm. there are a lot of issues now mm. eating up what you currently have. Mm. We also have the issue when it comes to um, dormant accounts. Mm. You know, in, in Nigeria, we've, you've seen some of those uh, money is there, might be borrowed, you know, for development and, and all of that. How are you seeing all of this play out when it comes to um, asset distribution? Yeah, um, thank you, Ladi. I, I think, um, again, this is a reoccurring um, incident or situation where people find themselves. Um, and this happens within families, within businesses, uh, within partnership. And, you know, many other places you wouldn't even expect. And it means, again, that people have worked very hard to grow their assets, to have an asset base. And now they need to also be intentional about how those assets are being distributed. And again, what happens is that from families and um, sometimes, again, from, you know, siblings and many other things which you have like that, when people are not intentional and the statistics are very baffling in terms of the number of people who do not make adequate plans for their assets and liability. And because a lot happened in the world where we live in today, um, you know, health issues, uh, demise eventually, and you leave behind a trail of family scrabbles and battles and litigations and uncertainty. And so the need to make intentional, you know, your assets and your liability is paramount for every one individual whoever that person is, whether you're a high net worth individual, um, small scale business owner, a nuclear family, an extended family, whatever the case is, talk to a professional, talk to an expert and get your estate in order. Recently, uh, the CBN guideline, which you mentioned, um, threw into FOIA this long age issue of what is the difference between a next of kin and a beneficiary. Right, There are certain laws that are already in place, like the estate administrative laws of Lagos State, that state that no one can take anything that belongs to yours, to you, um, except um, as clearly specified by you. Now, the CBN guideline says that all dormant accounts, 10 years and above, can now be assessed by the next of kin. Your next of kin is anyone who can be easily contacted in the event of anything that goes wrong, maybe at your place of work and business line or so. But your beneficiaries are your dependents who you desire your asset to go to. Now, if you leave your estate on plan to the asset which you have worked very hard for, um, the law says that a next of kin can walk up and take it over. And I think this is not clearly the intention of many people. So except we get very intentional about it, we'll continue to see a lot of um, uncertainty, a lot of disputes and unnecessary battles, if you ask me. Right. And, you know, talking about disputes, we've seen, you know, some families, mm. you know, still battling mm. 10 years after, you mm. know, for um, what was left behind, you know, by, mm. uh, by the breadwinner. So, you know, at this point, we're seeing these guidelines from the CBN, we're mm. seeing, you know, other guidelines and laws, you know, guiding all of this. But how clear do you think um, this can be made so that we don't have you know, most of these days, because it's quite sad seeing a brother and sister fighting over property. Mm. Yeah, so a very good one. Uh, and again, um, Ladi, as the case would be, is that we tell people that, um, you know, the life cycle of people, you, you, you grow up, you get work, you start a business, you grow assets, make out time to plan for your dependents and your words, which could be your, your spouse, your children, whoever depends on you right? Determine who owns your business, your small startup, that patent you have, that copyright you have, 
who owns it. There's ownership to all of these things. And your asset is everything from physical to intangibles, uh, from stocks to, um, you know, equity, whatever it is, you know, make that plans like that. Because when a person makes a testamentary plan, take for instance, you leave a will or a trust behind, you become very clear and very intentional. You make it easy for yourself, your dependents, and even the law to administer those assets and distribute it accordingly. But when a person doesn't leave behind any form of estate plan, e.g. a trust or a will, um, you leave everything open to disputes, family scrabbling, sometimes some uh, minors, you know, don't benefit from it. We have people thrown out of homes, kids not being able to go to school anymore, and some creditors even taking over assets that should not have been within their possession. So it leaves a lot of uncertainty, and siblings even get to a point where you're going to court, um, you know, it leads to a lot of disputes. Businesses die in the middle of all of this dispute. And the statistics speaks to it at a very alarming rate. So absolutely, way to go, be intentional, take actions now, don't procrastinate, and make it worth the while. Right, I guess it's one thing actually um, having something, you know, to, to leave behind. And, you know, we're seeing a lot of macroeconomic headwinds now, you know, impacting mm -hmm. everyone, you yeah. know, at this point. Uh, how do you see, um, you know, estate, have you, even having some kind of estate being left behind, you know, in times of, you know, economic quagmire, how, how does that work? Is there any, is there a negative impact on, you know, what people leave behind when you have all of the inflation and currency devaluation eating into your current assets? Yes. So again, the, the, the good thing about um, estate planning and oftentimes, and this is a very valid question, people ask and say, oh, I don't have much. Why should I plan an estate? This is strictly for um, HNIs or ultra HNIs, you know, high net worth individuals who have a lot of disposition uh, funds. But do you have an RSA wheel, right? Do you have a pension, uh, you know, account? Do you have some um, stock? Do you have an account? Do you have a bank account? Then you should have an estate plan because it is a flexible plan that allows you to grow over the years and you can keep making amendments. A wheel itself is not cast in law. There are codices that allow for amendments. But once you put your estate together, it does a mental thing to you. It gives you an oversight of all what you have and helps you determine how you can grow, edge your risk, and increase in the face of financial difficulty. Indeed, the microeconomic outlook is becoming very challenging for anyone. So if you have assets that are distributed that you're not sweating or making anything out of, this is the time under this sort of hardship to look into it pay attention to it so that you can always edge against the economy until things again, you know, get better, which um, I don't know what. Because uh, I can imagine, you know, leaving some money, you know, to your, your dependents. And Absolutely. Um, when you left it, maybe at the exchange rate was still quite strong. Then yeah. when you, you go and you, they now try to access the funds, inflation and currency devaluation are eating all of Absolutely. that up. So you, know, you have to find the right you know, investments to actually yeah. pass on, yes. you, you and, know, at this point. And, and you know, the good thing about when um, perhaps a trustee's manager your estate is the fact that uh, no funds or assets is left dormant. Whatever needs to be invested. I will tell you again, for some of the perhaps siblings, rivalry, family dispute and all the rest, because they are court litigations, all of the assets are left the way they are. Nothing is done. 10 years, 20 years and even more often time. The question is that the value of setting, uh, you know, funds in the account or whatever it is within this period of time could have depreciated. If it was in the hands of a, a trustee, it could have been invested, you know, it could have been sweated. The most of it, you know, it could have been made the most out of, you know, and again, I agree to that point. All right. So let's look at, um, um, the cost of, you know, managing your estate and, you know, how, how expensive is it or, um, maybe not so expensive because, I, you know, we've heard people say, oh, I don't have anything, you know, to leave behind. So if I'm trying to get, you know, this planning done, it might even cost me what I have now. So what's the cost of, you know, getting these plans? No, no. So again, um, there is no one, uh, there's no two estate plan that's the same, right? Because you have your own peculiarities, your assets and other things like that. And so that means that there is something for the mass affluence. There is something for... Um, you know, HNIs, there's also the retail part of it, 
right, which a lot of technological um, uh, leverage is being used to help this leverage. Like you can come on board, start something. We tell people, even if what you have is a single asset trust, start with a single asset, asset trust. Very affordable. The entry point is quite easy. Speak to a professional. A first line of discussion could put you into place. And I, again, we tell people that um, let it grow with your assets. The fee grows with the assets. Right. Any service that would deplete generally what you have and doesn't increase it is really not a service because at the end of the day, you're less for it than more for it by going into that service. So very cost efficient, very affordable. And please talk to a professional. Right. And, and you know, give me an overview. Do are Nigerians really leaving those wheels behind? Uh, have you seen an improvement, you know, so far, you know, in, in that segment? Yes, yeah, so surprisingly, um, we're not getting so much. And again, you'll be quite surprised that, um, so this is it now. Asset planning, like any other financial service, right, runs on the back of the financial literacy of a particular society. So that means that our knowledge, our exposure and enlightenment of a certain aspect is, has a direct proportion to the financial literacy which we have. So how many people are even banked? What are the bankable population of Nigeria? How many people have a formal education and could understand that? Number two also is that where is the awareness, the knowledge, right? A lot of people stumble, oh, I don't know about this. Why didn't anyone tell me? So even among the educated lots within the population, we've seen a lot of situations whereby um, people who are learned, who are schooled, right, uh, not leaving any will behind. The statistics is staggering. And how do you know that? Somebody passes on and then there's no probate. Nobody goes to court to read any will. Everybody sits down. There are family meetings. People go lock up houses. And they say, oh, we thought this person is very educated. We thought he's a prof. We thought he knew this. Again, alertness and awareness helps this process. Number two is also procrastination. A lot of people believe I will do it tomorrow. I will do it some other time. I was saying that, look, if you have the parents and you really, truly love them and care about them, this is your opportunity to get up and do something now. Number two also is that if you also have this um, uh, time, you don't have the luxury of time to put this together. Some of the estate plan is not ambulatory, which means it take, taking effect after death. It is also valuable now while you're on seats, it's valuable while you're alive. It makes life easier for you. You have an estate that literally takes care of itself. For tax benefit, it is perfectly awesome. It helps you to get a headway into tax, manage things, and use other instruments like gifting to save your dependents the, the trouble of cost of transfer of certain assets to them. Yeah. Right, quite, quite interesting. And you know, definitely we hope uh, more people you know, as you get older, you Absolutely. make plans, you know, for um, the next uh, segment. So thank you so much. It was great having you, Michael Abiodun Farmers, MDCEO, United Capital Trustees Limited. Thank, thank you, you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you.